Right, well, good afternoon everybody, and welcome to the plot. Uh, I know I'm a little bit late this week, but uh, I've been stored off as usual, and of course the weather hasn't helped. As you can probably tell, it's, uh, I'm at home, a little 6x6, and uh, the rain's still coming down. It has never stopped here in the northeast for the last three, four days. Had some heavy gales yesterday, but uh, the rain's been absolutely horrendous. Poured down. It's not that the gardens could do with it, like with it there. I was commenting last week that the gardens were a little bit dry, but um, after the last uh, deluge we've had for the last four days, it's, uh, I'll, uh, I'll keep you up my mouth shut. And uh, no, I haven't been doing a rain dance, as uh, a lot of people on my Facebook page keep saying. Uh, I've just waited for the weather to break, and it has dramatically for this week. And we were on the on the uh, on the point of watering. Um, a lot of people have been there, uh, had mixed fortunes this year. But uh, I always say, if you can get your watering right, um, you're nine times there in gardening. Um, it can be the kiss of death, or it can be the, the kiss of life. Um, under watering, over watering, watering when it's too cold. Um, there's all different um, diseases. You go to use your, your water butts. I've often said in uh, some of the earlier videos, when you're, especially when you're sowing seed, is to uh, make sure your water is nice and fresh. A lot of people just dive into the water barrel in the greenhouse, pull it out, uh, put a rose on the end of the watering can and get our seed trays a good soak with that. But it's full of pathogens, full of molds, um, the amount of bugs that breeze in your, in your tanks throughout the summer. With the, the weather warming up, a bit of sunshine on the water, you get a green algae on top of it. And of course, you're going to water that straight on top of your compost. Nice, fresh, clean compost. And uh, it's a kiss of death, your plants. Um, as I say, you'll get a green algae growing straight away on your new compost before your seeds even start to come through. And if they do, by any chance, struggle to come through, they're going to be covered with that algae. As I say, pathogens, all sorts. And nine times out of ten, you're going to get them dampened enough or killed off just with the, uh, the state of the compost. So, if you're watering, Nice fresh water, bring it in the greenhouse, in your tank, uh, your water can, this is not me, me normal one, this is uh, my little one that my grandson uses, so I uh, always keep it handy. As I say, bring your water can in the greenhouse, nice fresh water, let it come up to temperature, even in the summer. You'd be quite surprised at the, the coolness of the water when you bring it out the top. If it's just rained recently and you fill your water put, Nine times out of ten, the water's going to be really chilled. So bring it in the greenhouse, let it come up with temperature. As I say, our fresh water over the top. And water your plants with that. And uh, that'll save a lot of heartache in the long run. As I say, watering, it's uh, your nine times, your ninety percent there if you get a watering right on plants. Plants have different, um, different methods of taking the water up. In here, I sowed four of my Charleston grey melons. Now, I've done a completely different way of growing these. What I did, I did the ring culture. I just sow them in the in the nine-inch black pots, and I put the black pots into a grow bag. Now, melons are serious. Cucumbers, squashes, they're all the same family. All the cucubits. And if they get neck rot, that's it. Too much water around the neck, and that's it. Kiss of death. They're dead. So what I'd like to do is to set my winter pots and just, as I've grown, just use a small watering can, as I do with this one, and just water around the outside of the pot. And then once the roots are down to the bottom, the tap roots, once they're in that compost, I can put as much water down below in that grow bag as I want. I'm soaking that every day, and the plants are never short of water. I'm taking that up, but at the same time, I'm keeping the next dry. Tomatoes are another thing. Um, Underwatering tomatoes, overwatering tomatoes. There's plenty of diseases, there's plenty of um, symptoms that I can pick up. Uh, blossom end rot is mainly down to underwatering. Uh, as I say, they kind of get the um, they kind of get the feeds out the soils, the magnesium or the you know what, what they need. If they're not getting the water, then they kind of take that up, and so you end up with blossom end rot. Splitting as they like down to overwatering. Your tomatoes go dry, you're pouring tons of water on them, that, that uptake of the plants taking it up straight away, and then your, your, your fruits are splitting. So that's another, uh, that's another part. 
get water and right. I know it's hard when they're in pots. Uh, a lot of people grow their tomatoes in pots. It's a lot more difficult um, getting your water and right in pots than where it is in the open ground. That's where you always, we always have raised beds in the allotment. I was at two foot deep, and uh, the compost, as I say, is a good 80 inches deep so that the tomatoes can go right down their roots. If we do miss it a day, two days, without watering, that's fine because there's plenty of water down below. We can just stick the whippy hoses on and let them drip away all night if we, if we need be. And so the beds get really saturated. But they're, they're free draining, which is another uh, another good point. Make sure your compost is free draining because if you're over if you're over watering, then that damp, soggy peat, and then that's another disaster waiting to happen because your roots are just going to get soaked, too wet. Nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, they'll die off. So that's another uh, another valid point. But as I say, get your water and right, and uh, you can start enjoying some fruits like these. Now this is uh, as I say, this is my Charleston Grey. Uh, it's the first time I've grown these, and these are uh, these are a red watermelon, and uh, that's one of them. I'm absolutely overwhelmed with that. I'm uh, I kind of wait to get stuck into that one, uh, but. I'll let it go for another week or two. Here's some smaller ones on. Different size there. If I can just lift that runner up. Now the runners on here are fantastic. I will just show you this one because what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to stop it. Let <coughs> me see this first. What I like to do with my melons is I like to go two leaves past the fruit. So the fruit's on there, two leaves past there, and I like to nip the runner off. Now that's just going to lie on the back of the bed there. That runner can come away. And as I say, down below here, once again, if I can find it, I get that tangled up. There's a smaller one just coming on there. Um, a lot of people have problems with pollination. Never do, not with fruits. Uh, my melons have been pollinated quite, quite readily this year. What I like to do, um, I like to open the doors. And outside I've got plenty of flowers, marigolds, lilies, and of course they bring in the insects, the flying pollinators, the hollow flies, get them inside. And if you do have trouble pollinating, and then it's quite an easy job to find a, a small male flower, a female, and pollinate it by hand. Even just using a small paintbrush, you can do that. But nine times out of ten, I don't bother at all. I just let the insects in and they do that. They do the job for us, but there. Uh, that's my melons. I'm over the moon this year. I'm getting some nice, uh, getting some nice fruits. So we're just going to let them grow away. Maybe just by next week, we'll try this one. We'll s normally you can tell by the smell of them uh, when they start going nice and light, ripening, and then you get a smell from the melons, the sweetness. So I'm hoping that's when it'll be ripe. So we'll try that next week anyway. But uh, this week or, or today, I'm going to try and get up the plot. And uh, I'm going to make a start in the spring cabbage. I've been sown uh, a lot of spring flowering pansies, polyanthus, wallflowers, uh, foxgloves. There's loads to be doing this time of year. Now a lot of people are starting to uh, turn towards emptying out their greenhouses soon over the next month or two. And they're always wondering what to put in that place. Well, me, you know me, because uh, we always like to turn our greenhouses around, different crop in every year. So what I'll be doing this year, is I want to do every year, is sow my spring cabbage. I've got three varieties to sow this year. Um, I've got the Wheelers Imperial that I showed you last year. I've got the Giant Round Spring Hero for outside. And I've got the Cabbage Duncan which I grow every year. It's a small, nice, compact pointer one. You can really close, <coughs> you can really close them in with your spring cabbage and you get plenty in a row. <coughs> so I'll be starting that this afternoon. Yeah, I'll make me compost up in the garden and get a, get a spring cabbage sown because ideally I'll be wanting to look at planting them out in the middle to the end of August. Now, in the bottom polytunnel up there, we've got our, our sweet corn, our peas. The peas haven't done so well this year, I don't know why. The sweet corn hasn't done so well. We're getting a few crops off them, but the melons have overtaken the bottom. And uh, I'm hoping for some, some nice melons off them, but I'll show you them at a later date. But once that greenhouse is cleared, I'm already starting to think about next year. Now next year the tomatoes will be going into there. So what I need to do this year, is I've explained in a couple of videos, I never have to flush my beds. 
Um, what I'll be doing, I'll be once the sweet corn and the melon soil is clear out, we'll give it a good um, a good clean down, turn it over, and we'll fill it with spring cabbage. Now the spring cabbage will do the job for me, but the spring cabbage will do will take all that excess salts, all that excess um, fertiliser that's been in that bed and completely clean it out. They'll strip the soil. So next year we'll grow a nice, when we take the spring cabbage out, we'll grow a nice, clean, fertile soil. What I'll be doing then, I'll be giving it a good liming, extra manure, I'll take a reading, some extra, extra manure, and then the tomatoes will go in there. So once again, they're getting turned around. Every year, the bed's getting changed. I never use a bed, the same bed, for two years running. Where I've got the um, the trial tomatoes in the greenhouse this year, in the 100 foot greenhouse, and that's going to be completely filled with potatoes. Um, there'll be what, early cropping potatoes. We'll get three rows in there. I've had some cracking results this year. Uh, some of the jazzy potatoes that were planted, they've come up great. Nice salad potatoes. And my main crop, we've got our red ones in. They're doing fantastic. We just had a little peep there this morning. Some really nice tubers going on them. But this is the weather for them. We're getting, they're getting plenty of rain. Um, four or five weeks ago, we had that dry spell. And it's the first time I've seen potatoes wilting. Um, I've never seen it before. But uh, the, the, the potatoes were actually wilting with the, the lack of water. And of course, you kind of spend hours and hours, hours and end hosing the, uh, the garden stone because that's, um, you know, you've just got to hang fire. If you can't spare a little bit of water on them with a the hose, fair enough, it keeps them ticking over. Pump but we like to wait until the rains come. And of course, we've been fortunate this year, the rains have come and it's given them a real welcome boost. They're, uh, they're jumping there now. So, as I say, we'll get ourselves for the plot. I want to get started on these spring cabbages. I'll show you the, the one crop that I did have to take up that I was getting really worried about was the Japanese onions that I started. Uh, not the Japanese onions, sorry, the um, the Spanish onions. Now, I started them off in January in here. I got the seeds from um, Benny Dome last year. One of the brothers went over and he brought them back. And once again, I'm going to ask him to do exactly the same because they're a fantastic seed. I'm over the moon with them. I was looking at them last week and before the rain started they were really swelled, nice big bulbs and I was just getting a little bit worried if we get a heavy rainfall um, it's going to really put some stress on them bulbs they're going, to, they're going to take all that water up, all that moisture and there's a good chance they'll start splitting not only splitting but catching a rot from underneath if you've got any white rot, anything like that um, any funguses on the soil that the onions can pick up and it just, once they set in and there's a good chance you'll lose your onions. So just check your onions, have a look at them. Lift one by all means, make sure it's nice and clear in the bottom. If you've still got nice white roots, and you're not too sure about the size of the onions, that you still think they can go on a little bit longer, well, leave them in by all means. Just take one up, try it. And that's what I did, I took one up, and it was, it was a fantastic onion. The roots were nice and clean, the bottom was a little bit moist, so I thought, yes, time to get them out. I don't want them sitting in all this rain and rotting off. So me and Roger set two last week and we lifted all the Japanese onions up and uh, I'm over the moon with them. All the Spanish onions, sorry, I will say the Jap onions. The Jap onions were lifted four or five weeks ago and they're beautiful. They're a golden brown. They're hanging up in the shed in the allotment. Absolutely fantastic. And we're actually using them now for uh, for cooking and eating in the home. Lovely for on salads and all. Nice and sweet. But uh, I'm hoping the Spanish onions are going to be exactly the same. But uh, that's my tip. If you're, if you're worried about your onions, Normally, I don't lift mine till the end of August, beginning of September. Um, but as I say, with all this heavy rain we're having, I thought better get them out of the soil, clean them off, get them tied up in the bunches, and get them hanging up. If, if you're worried about them, then follow our advice and get them up off the, off the soil. If they're too wet, yeah, there's a chance of them starting to get some rot in them. So, yeah, I'm over the moon with that. But uh, like I say, we're going to get ourselves up the plot here, and uh, hopefully, we'll get this video online. Let's see, I've got spring cabbage to sow, um, and I've got a multitude of flowers still to get on with. And what I want to crack on with is my leeks, the, the show leeks. We've had uh, two or three per week of seed, and I've got some lovely heads on. So I'm going to take a uh, nice pasty of up with us, and we'll do a, a barbershop uh, quartet. A little bit of singing, and I'll, uh, I'll do a quick cut on the leek heads. And that's the leek heads for next year, which is going to give our big show leeks. So, Follow up to the plot and uh, see how we'll get on up there. But I'm, uh, I'm going to get myself away before that next heavy rain comes and hopefully we'll get this uh, video online tonight. 
Okay, so I'll see you at the plot soon. Right, well, finally managed to get up here this afternoon. It's been absolutely tipping down, but uh, we've got a few good downpours, but uh, I'm hoping it's going to ease up for, uh, for a half an hour we'll get this video started. I've just been busy. Picked myself a couple of nice giant orange tomatoes. And one of them will go for tea tomorrow, and that one will go for seed. I've got quite a few down there. I've been taking three or four uh, different varieties. Let's uh, I'll show you how I take them. Take a seed out, wash the seed, put them on a bit of blotting paper or a bit of kitchen towel, let them dry out and stick them in an envelope, and they're fantastic for next year. But uh, these ones I especially want. It's the first year I've tried them, but they're uh, absolutely marvellous, first class, and uh, I'm, sur I'm surmising they're going to be really tasty. But uh, that's the next step. It's all about saving your own seed. They keep me happy. Um, I was talking about the onions uh, before. Well, there we are. There's one bunch just hanging up to dry. Well, these ones are the Spanish onions. <coughs> now, I got one of the family to bring some seeds back from uh, Benny Dome last year. And if you remember, I sowed these in January. But looking at them last week, after we had all the rainfall, I said to Roger, Look, let's get them onions out because they're getting a bit big for me. And uh, what I was worried about was on the bottom, getting any base or root, any any rot, white rot, anything like that. But uh, they've been out a couple of days now, the, the flags on the top are starting to die back, getting a bit dry, but uh, the bulbs, well as I say, the bulbs are absolutely fantastic. I'm over and over them, lovely big onion. Uh, normally I don't take my winter, my um, main crop onions up, as I say, until the end of August, beginning of September. <coughs> but what I didn't want to do, because with all the heavy rains we've been expecting over the last couple of weeks, was to get these so soaked that the rot sits in on them. So if you've got onions in the garden, all you've got to do is lift one and check it, see what the condition is like. If it's not soft or hasn't got any rot on, the rest should be okay. If they're still a bit small, but if they're big, well, get them up and uh, better safe than sorry, get them dried out, and these will go down the shed. Just if I can. Up there and lift it off, and that'll go to one side. First class onions, and move them over them. And of course, it's all about the seed. It's getting getting the seed, getting them sown, and getting the crops like that. Good watering, as I say, when I'm watering the seedlings throughout the year in the greenhouses, I've got my own trays here, which I line with paper, just newspaper, good quarter inch deep. Spread a full newspaper out, or two newspapers, amongst the whole tray. And with the compost I make, uh, multi-purpose compost, a good handful of extra sharp sand, and a little bit of perlite mixed in with it. And uh, that tree was soaked about half an hour ago, and it's it's nice and light again there now. So it's good free drainage. And of course, that's what I like for my seedlings. Uh, spring cabbage, perfect time to start planting now. I'll plant them in here, but they're not stopping here, they'll go up in the back border. Where, if you remember last week, I started sowing some of the pansies. There we are. Rows of three. As I say, you will get the odd weeds grown up amongst them. Depends on what compost you use, but there, there's my pansies already on the way up there now. That's the one tree I'm going to sow. Another two trees this week, winter flower pansy. Um, the polyanthus are just starting to come through. But there, be brought in from outside on the bench. I don't like bringing anything up too quick. I just like to take my time with it. Now, the spring cabbage I'm going to be sowing. I've got some that I kept back off last year, some Wheeler's Imperial um, that I sowed, and they'll be going in the polytunnel. Now the uh, the spring hero, that's a big round, giant round cabbage, and that's going to be planted uh, now in trays, and that'll be potted off into cups, and that'll sit on the back bench until middle at the end of September when that bench is cleared, uh, when the, the bed's cleared and we'll plant them out then. Of course there'll be a net goes right over the whole lot to stop the winter pigeons from pecking at them. But uh, they've grown really well for me. Another good one, of course, is uh, Durham Early. I've grown Durham Early for years and years and years. A real hardy, nice dark green cabbage. Um, and they do quite well in the garden. And of course my old favourite is uh, the Cabbage Duncan. Nice pointy headed one. And these I'll go for the inside. Now these will go in when the tomatoes come out, 
<coughs> or where the sweet corn's been, they'll come out, the bed will be completely clear, and it'll be planted up with cabbages, and the cabbages will do the trick for me. They'll clean all the bed out, take all the excess salts out, right throughout the winter, and now again, this spring cabbage in the spring, and of course the bed's nice and clean. All at once, a bit extra manure, a bit lime, and whatever, whatever crop's going in, and then, as I say, I never have to flush my beds by using cabbages to, to do the job for us right throughout the year. So I'm going to sow these dunking. Um, as I say, I always check the back again, and it should tell you on the back how many seeds you've got. Now, always with these, there's a hundred seed, so what I like to use is a full size seed tray, just normal size seed tray, uh, and a hundred seed. I like to give them a I think you give them quite a bit of room to grow. I like them to get up a good decent size before I put them up into a pot and then they'll sit in a pot for a good three or four weeks easy prior to planting out. So what we'll do, we'll get these. And what I like to do is I'll also take the cabbages are pretty easy um, to sow. A nice size seed. And what I like to do is tip them in the, into the pond behind and of course just go up and down. Up and down the rows. Just gently teasing them out, and you find you get a nice even distribution of seed. And that's me, first of the spring cabbage. All the one with them. That's them in. Soil is nice and moist. Once again, I give it a good spraying with chamomile tea. Good soaking over the seed, or over the top of it. And then once again, just a little bit extra, pure light, and uh, multi-purpose compost with your sharp sand in, and just uh, a very light covering over the top of that. And that's, um, it'll go up. Now, out on the back bench, as I see, I have got a little bit of cover on top of the bench, with the PVC, but they're open to the weather. That's it, man. Don't forget to put your tally in, your marker, marker's down there, go right on there where it is, and stick it in, and that's the dunking away. <coughs> we'll get them on the back, and I'll be over the moon with them. I'll keep my glasses handy because there's one more little job I want to do, yeah, before I'm just going to knock this camera off. And then set it back on again, just in case we run out of bit, run out of time. Now, as I say, the onions are planted in January, which were the Spanish onions, absolutely first class. I wasn't expecting uh, that size of crop out of them. But what I will be doing next year, uh, if I can find a pot. There's a few people posting online there. I have a mace. I have a mace. One of the big flower growers. He posted a couple of pics of his onions. And all the worrying is pots like that, and they've got quite a size onion. So what I'm going to do next year, because my my onions normally end up in into black bags, uh, which I've got some lying around somewhere, same as my leeks. They normally end up in the bags like that, and of course there's all the extra work of potting off, potting on. So my thought next year. Is that when they come out the smaller pots, the little six or seven centimetre pots, when the onions come out of there and they go into this pot here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave them in there. I'm not going to take them out. As long as they're sitting on the surface. The roots will be coming out the bottom, and all I'm going to do in one of the beds is just make a shallow trench, well manured bed, a shallow trench, and sit them in a the shallow trench and just pull the soil around the, the outsides. And I hope I'm going to get a cracking onion out of there. And that just saves the potting off, potting on. When it's ready, you can just pull it up. What's good about it, you can go up from the bottom if you want, uh, without too much water getting on the top and spoiling the bulb. Uh, as I say, you haven't got much control over watering when it's outside. But uh, that's one of the, if you're feeding and you're watering, you can feed directly to the roots by just sitting it in the solid trench, the shallow trench, and that's what I'm going to try next year. So that's, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that's one of the little tricks I'll try out next year and see how they grow. Right, so, Barbershop job. 
Now this is one of the ceilings of my big leaks of last year. So what I've done, I took the um, I took some of the pods off it last year, and uh, I've got six of these growing away. Now that's all the seed head that's on there. If you just want seed, you can just let that go. They'll grow away, no problem. They'll turn brown, the seed heads will go ripe, <coughs> and then back in the year you'll get some nice seed off it. But I don't want seed from it. I want grass or pods, what they call them. So I'm going to give it a little haircut, and all I'm going to do is take a pair of scissors and just cut them off. Nice and neat. I'm not going to do it any harm. Just go all around. I like to leave about a half inch of, of stem. I'll never make a barber. But there again. And that's one done. Hold the one with that. That's all them seed heads cut off. And I've left about a half inch of stem. Now what's going to happen now is all the bulbs down on the base of the lily head will start growing out. It's what's called their bulbs or grass. And it'll start sending them shoots out. And we'll get some nice, nice young plants. As I say, round about end of September, early October. You can grow them on and then put them off when they start coming away from the top of the leek head. Uh, as you see, it'll come right out. You get some nice long lengths of grass, uh, or, or bulbs is what the, some of them call them. And uh, you can take these off the plant easy enough. Uh, a lot of lads just put in a little bit of Epsom salts in the water, or a little bit of um, what you clean your teeth with, um, and then give it a good shake up and the bulb will just fall away from it. Get the bulb wheels, just plant them up in the tree, an ordinary tree, nice sandy compost, and the, the way they'll grow. That's if you want to take early leaks for next year. But there, as I say, you'll need heat on for them. And you need to keep them going right through the winter. Otherwise, if, uh, if they get a cold spell, what will happen with them, they'll revert to the natural, produ uh, the natural uh, way of them, and that the, the second year, which is next year, they'll go to seed. So you've just got to be careful with that. But that's, um, that's one way of growing some big giant super leeks. It's exactly the same with the onion plant. Onions are exactly the same. The onion will now be sending the, um, what you call bulbils on there, or it'll be sending heads off, seed head. You can do exactly the same thing. Uh, cut around the heads and uh, you'll get yourself a nice, nice crop of fresh growth for planting out in October and November. So we'll keep an eye on it. I've got about six of these to do. I might leave a couple for seed and just cut about four of them away and uh, see what we'll get on them. But uh, we'll not be starting on these. We'll not be starting on these till about um, October time. Bad enough. Not the show lads will have them well in long before then. But there, uh, as I say, their leaks are on the go now. Um, their heads are filling right out, so they'll be taking them as soon as they can. But um, I'm quite happy with that, just letting it sit, and hopefully we'll get some uh, we'll get some lovely leaks off that for next year. But there, uh, that's it for today. I'm going to crack on with seed soon. As I say, watering. It's got to be one of the main things in the garden. If you can uh, if you can get a grip of your watering, learn how to water properly. As I say, I always use seed trays. A bit of newspaper on the bottom. You can use an old bread tray. Line it with polythene. Newspaper in. It'll do exactly the same thing. It just means when this seed tree is full of seedlings, uh, full of trees, I can just come along with the watering can and then just water the whole tree. As long as it's on the level. And of course, the newspaper gets nice and wet. That needs to level it up. The newspaper gets nice and wet, and of course, the seeds take it up in their own time and they get watered perfectly. Nothing too heavy. But, uh, these will go back outside now on the back bench, and then hopefully in a couple of weeks' time we'll get some nice, nice cabbage to, uh, to start pricking off into pots, ready for the print in our seed beds. Hopefully by the end of September. So we'll put that pattern away. We'll get some polyanthus out, some primulas, some pansy, some wallflower, some sweet william, some foxgloves, and the list just goes on and on and on, and we'll get there. Uh, We've got a lot of 
front out and start saving more we'll, uh, seed for next year. So this is just another example of uh, what you can do now. But uh, busy times outside. We're, we're busy trying to get a lot of crops in: potatoes, onions. Uh, as I say, tomatoes, cucumbers done really well. So uh, I'm well pleased this year. I haven't gotten as far as what I would like, but come next year we'll be back on it. We'll be back to, back to square one. Hopefully I'll be back to full health and uh, we'll get some fantastic crops growing for next year. But I'm going to knock off for the time being. Thanks for all the new subscribers. There's quite a few come on after the last posting. I did promise to try and get on the coast and get some seaweed, but unfortunately um, I've had that much to do with the last couple of weeks. Been really busy. I'm going to be busy again next week. I've got a, a wedding coming up, so we'll get that out of the way, and then hopefully we'll get back to making some uh, some useful videos for you for watching through the week. But uh, yeah, that's definitely my next uh, case is to get on to get on the coast, get some good seaweed, and we'll start uh, to more muck bins up. Because to say, if you've got some good muck bins, good damn um, homegrown uh, compost that you make yourself, and uh, it's absolutely fantastic for you making your mixes up for next year. But I'll show you all that in the next video. As I say, say thanks for subscribing, thanks for sharing, and uh, we'll see you all again in the next video. Okay, bye for now.